the rather definitely um, mathematical, almost diagrammatic way in which our ancient forebears developed their concepts of astroanalysis is of very definite interest to us now because it may form an important part of the future study of psychology. Many things that do not seem probable at a given time become more probable as our knowledge enlarges and our tolerance broadens. The general psychology as we have it is very close to astrology in many of its techniques even now. And the similarity is almost certain to improve with years. The ancients evolved a system of basic concepts as to the use and abuse of sidereal energy. Also the ancients perhaps were among the first to recognize the universe as our principal conditioning environment. We cannot escape entirely the influence of the way of life in which we exist as creatures. This way of life was not devised by us, but constitutes a vast universal background within which we carry on our own assorted projects. We are therefore creatures possessing a measure of individuality, continually using and abusing energies. The natural use of energy is always to affect normalcy, to result in an harmonious adjustment between the individual and his world. The abuse of energy always threatens this harmonious adjustment. And when this adjustment is at part at least destroyed, the person himself suffers from the consequences. This suffering, of course, extends beyond the individual and may very often become world problem. Problem is always the result of the lack of harmonious use of energies. This lack may arise from ignorance in which the human being simply does not know how to use energies that are vastly beyond his own comprehension. The second cause of trouble is a calculated effort to exploit or pervert energies, as we find in individuals who have permitted selfishness and other faults to dominate their conduct. Where we are unable to cope with energy because we do not understand it, we proceed by way of trial and error. We attempt various experiments with life. This experimentation has been going on since the dawn of time. And from these experiments we learn certain useful facts. We learn to a measure at least what we can do and what we cannot do safely. We realize that certain causes inevitably produce consistent results. And wherever we find that a cause produces a detrimental result, or a result which is not harmonious with our security and well-being, we make note of this. And from the note so taken, we have developed a variety of beliefs and opinions. Inasmuch as the vast collective in which we exist has anciently been regarded as a divine structure and the mysterious laws governing it have been regarded as the will of God, it became obvious to primitive people, strongly religious in their inclinations, that the universe was constantly attempting to teach us something and that this revelation was the revealing of the will of God for creatures. From this revelation of the divine will, 
we are reasonably certain that most of our scriptural writings originated. They came from persons who were inwardly illumined to the degree that they apprehended or understood certain operations of natural law which were not obvious to the average semi-informed person. From the same contemplation, philosophy gathered most of its ethical structure, its recognition of right and wrong, its ability to formulate codes, political, cultural, ethical, for the improvement of society and the perpetuation of worthy and proper institutions. From this same general reservoir of observation and reflection came also the beginnings of science, the recognition of those laws with which man must cooperate, laws which also continually invite an improvement, an enlargement of human empire. Thus from a primitive observation, perhaps on the fields of Babylon long ago, Western man gained his point of view. He also learned, as he went along, that this point of view was not imaginary. It was not merely something he had conjured up out of his own imagination. This point of view was rooted and grounded in real observational knowledge. It proved itself again and again, and wherever man attempted to deviate from these basic courses, he found himself in trouble. All of this forms together a kind of world psychological science, a science of the understanding of the principles operating the life forces with which we exist. And in the effort to understand these forces, man turned not only to the vast universe around him, but to the smaller universe within him. He became convinced in his own way that his body was a kind of miniature of this universal pattern, that through the study of his own parts and functions, through a gradual analysis of his own nature and character, he was able also to arrive at useful knowledge, factual knowledge, suitable to assist him in the perpetuating of his own purposes, especially if these purposes were worthy and proper. Man therefore learned that his body has its laws, that these laws depend very largely upon the larger pattern which is their source, but that universal procedure is continuously operating in human life, and that man himself must keep the same rules uh, within his nature that he must obey in the larger world about him. Naturally, all human beings desire health and happiness. And out of a study of nature, man has discovered something about the laws ruling health and happiness. He learned, first of all, that for him, a happy, healthy condition must arise from obedience. He must keep rules. He must discipline himself against the natural instinct and tendency to regard himself as a completely free and ungoverned creature. He must also be aware that self-government itself is not sufficient unless this self-government is rooted in an understanding of universal law. Therefore, man must experience self-government as a voluntary obedience with the rules of his kind. For if he disobeys these rules, regardless of his motives, certain disasters will result. The most common disasters that we know are misery and sickness. Misery being largely an emotional mental problem in which the individual becomes culturally ill. Pain or sickness represents interference with the normal function of physical law. We observe that certain inharmonies arise within the body Unless these are corrected, the body must suffer. And we have come to know, finally, that the body cannot be merely exploited by its owner. The body is not merely here to permit the individual to do as he pleases. It is here to permit him to function, normal, function normally if he does as he must, or as he should, 
or as intelligence indicates would be desirable for him. Out of this uh, series of observations, our primitive ancestors in medicine, particularly, came to the conclusion that health arises from an harmonious use of energies. That health, in order to be maintained, must have beneath it an enlightened purpose in conduct. Health must be watchfully guarded. It must be cultivated as the natural and proper state of man. Health is not extraordinary. Health is ordinary. It is the common proper state of things, that in the various periods of their living they shall fulfill these periods constructively, and that at the different stages of life there are different levels of health to which each individual can aspire and which he can attain in most instances through understanding and obedience. Now this does not mean that man is as yet possessed with an infallible guide by means of which he can in all things move correctly. There are forces around him and within him which he yet does not know and which will continue to present him with problems. These problems are invitations for further thoughtfulness in order that he may gradually conquer the unknown and apply his newly made discoveries uh, to the security of his own existence and the way of life for those around him. This is, of sense, a summary of astrological philosophy. And while it may be derived from unorthodox sources, I believe that we will ultimately learn that it is essentially true, reasonable, and proper. In fact, perhaps more of common sense than that which now passes for scientific exactitude. So this morning we want to bring out a series of points which we think will be helpful to individuals now in order that something may be done to combat the consistently increasing dis-ease with which individuals are afflicted. Now if this morning we do not uh, make a series of wonderful optimistic remarks about all the different signs and their peoples, uh, please forgive me. We are not here this morning to say how wonderful we are. Everyone knows that already. Uh, we are fully aware of our achievements and our accomplishments. What we are looking for at the moment is weakness. We are looking for our mistakes in order, if possible, to correct them. We are looking for the things we do not do well, the infirmities and misfortunes which burden us. These constitute our problems and our problems represent achievements yet to be made, whereas our comforts and conveniences perhaps bear witness to the adjustments we have already accomplished. Therefore, let us say in this way that in astrology, each person born within a certain complex of time and place is endowed with conditioned energies. These energies represent an inheritance. And just as the individual may inherit means, or wealth, or property, or chattel, so he may inherit tendencies, qualities, attributes, aspects of character. Now when we think of inheriting, we think very largely, really, of the donation of our forebears, which may become the heaviest burden we have to carry. But our inheritance is also from space. Our inheritance is from some deep root of consciousness within ourselves, which lies beyond the ordinary uh, gifts and legacies. We have all inherited a place and a time in existence. And in this place and time, we must work out the patterns of our own potential. In order to do this as effectively as possible, we must be aware that there are rules. We must know what we can about these rules, and we must try to apply them to the personal situations that affect ourselves. It is, of course, not unreasonable to assume that most persons know they live in a world governed by law. 
We are aware of this intellectually. Uh, we are not fully aware of it emotionally. And we are seldom aware of it when it interferes immediately with our ambitions or desires. Thus, although we accept certain principles, we do not apply them. We do not live according to the laws we recognize as real. We do not live according to the laws of God or of nature, and we resent rather heartily the laws of man. These resentments, this attempt, particularly on the part of certain modern uh, materialistic and anarchistic philosophies, this tendency to rebel against that which is proper, reasonable, and for man inevitable, is measured in terms of discomfort, in harmony, and suffering. So we start with one rather simple and obvious rule, that if we are not a secure, happy, adjusted, and reasonably healthy person, there is room for improvement. Now, this room for improvement is a challenge. And wherever the individual is not able to function in a reasonable manner, is not able to control his own instincts and appetites to a reasonable degree, where we observe this lack of reasonable control, we know we are in the presence of the principal cause of trouble and that the trouble will continue until this control is finally discovered, recognized, and applied. To control an energy is often difficult for the reason that the energy arises within ourselves. We are not able always to identify it. We are not able to tell when it will suddenly emerge. We are not able always to anticipate the pressures and tensions which will accompany it. Thus, many of these experiences come upon us unawares, and before we realize what has happened, we have already made several unfortunate decisions. In the Western way of life, one of our reasons for trouble is our haste. We allow nothing to mature. We are not a contemplative people. We do not sit down quietly with ourselves. We do not have enough inner communion with our own natures to be able to say to our various pressures, be still. We are their victim. They come upon us while we are under other pressures. And in this complex of tensions, new elements are introduced so suddenly and sometimes so, dr sometimes so dramatically that we are unable to cope with them. One of the first problems, then, is to attempt to prevent the exceptional or extraordinary pressure from arising. We can do this usually uh, by permitting ourselves a greater degree of personal relaxation. A relaxation does not mean laziness. It does not mean that the individual sits around with his hands folded nor does it necessarily imply that he must get away somewhere into the mountains or the valleys and, and rest in the sun. Rest and relaxation are not identical things, although relaxation removes most of the need for rest as we know it. Actually, relaxation means to perform the various functions of life without tension, with a minimum of pressure. For the habit of pressure rapidly gets out of control. Once we become accustomed to doing things pressurefully, we lose the ability to do them graciously. Wherever pressure arises, there is danger. Just as the increasing pressure in a boiler may cause it to explode, so the increasing pr pressure in man's nervous system can cause illness. We observe today a constantly mounting pressure. The individual is responding more pressurefully to the circumstances around him than in any other time in history. To meet this requires a certain amount of conscious effort. We must resolve within ourselves to relax pressure, uh, to achieve what we can achieve without this tremendous sense of tension. We may feel that pressure hastens results, that without this pressure things would take too long to happen. 
Actually, pressure does not hasten any constructive result. Uh, pressure puts too much tension upon the body. It puts too much wear and tear upon the nervous system. Uh, pressure is like whipping a horse carrying a heavy load. The horse may be able to struggle on more rapidly for a few feet, and then it drops dead. There is no solutional result to be gained by whipping the body, the mind, or the emotions in the effort to accomplish some particular unit of business or other activity. Some signs of the zodiac are more pressureful than others. Some reveal their pressures more immediately. Uh, some extrovert their pressures rapidly. Others build up a tremendous amount of internal tension. And this is perhaps the most dangerous that we have to face. Internal tension, however, is not limited entirely to a type of person. Internal tension is a defense that can arise in all types of individuals under certain types of intensity. Up to a period of, say, 50 years ago, your extrovert and your introvert were two very clearly distinguished groups. The extrovert was simply a natural person who exhibited his feelings intensely and obviously. The introvert was an individual who naturally concealed his feelings out of timidity, out of reticence, out of some form of humility or modesty, or perhaps more dramatically, out of fear itself. Today, however, introversion is becoming an artificial habit in the lives of people originally untouched by it. We are all becoming more introverted because of the apparent hopelessness of the environmental situation. We find more and more difficulty in extroverting reasonably. It appears that we are living in a world moving so rapidly and under such tremendous compulsions that there is very little to be gained by coming out, saying anything, doing anything, or being anything. Thus, we have a tendency to fall back into introversion, even though we may not be what was, was originally termed an introverted type. Introversion may result from discouragement as to the ability of the individual to cope with any physical or environmental circumstance. Being hopeless and sensing helplessness, the person may simply retire into himself, carrying a greater and greater amount of internal load, locked in a greater and greater degree of internal intensity. Obviously, the more this intensity builds up, the more dangerous it becomes. The more mechanically organized, uh, the more industrialized and standardized the culture becomes, the more difficult it is for the individual to find self-expression. Lack of self-expression contributes to frustration. Where the person can make a useful contribution to a way of life, he has every incentive to be useful. Where his uh, contribution is neither recognized nor accepted, he gradually becomes discouraged therefore falls back into himself, building defenses or escapes according to his natural attributes. Today, our large defense mechanism, of course, is the magnitude of world affairs. Our escape is into trivia, into any form of unreasonable activity which seemingly gives relief for the moment. Thus, the boundary lines of types are not as clear as they used to be. More and more persons are involved in large patterns over which they cannot exercise adequate management. Uh, they are more and more victims of situations apparently beyond control. This requires a, a new ordering, a philosophic ordering of life. The ability of the person to recognize the dignity and significance of the integration of himself that where we cannot change other things, we still have the privilege of improving self. We have a, a, an opportunity to learn rapidly the importance of a sufficient internal life, a life that is made rich without the necessity for visible attainments, a life that is purposeful even in a society which may not recognize the purposes with which we are most concerned. 
The result of a purposeful organization of ourselves is that we do become an increasingly powerful minority of integrated persons whose opinions, attitudes, and achievements are available to society when society is willing to accept them. And also, we have then a voice which we can use increasingly for the good of the group. Uh, we become less likely to be moved by propaganda and common prejudices. We are not so quickly affected by negative circumstances. And as a result, we do not panic. And where emotions of panic diminish in society, many of the mistakes of society will in this way be corrected. Even today we observe the detrimental result of panic, a mania of masses, of groups of persons moved by propaganda or other forces to excesses not natural to them. These situations must gradually be brought under control. Thus, uh, we have in astrology uh, not only a key to a world pattern, we also have a useful text for the integration of our own natures. And it is on this level that we wish to particularly approach the subject at this time. The person is able, if he so exercises his abilities and capacities, to direct his own life. Uh, to correct those faults within him which are obviously contributing to his troubles. And also to develop new and positive values which will uh, contribute to new and positive solutions of problems. A problem person, to a degree at least, is an impoverished one. A person with problems is usually a person who has not much else but problem. He does not have an adequate allotment of values which are not problems. He is not able to turn from his problem thinking to other constructive, well-organized areas of mental emotional activity. Uh, working with people, I have observed that the person in trouble is usually a person who has not built much of anything but trouble. He has not recognized the possibility of a rich and valuable personal life. He has not given himself adequate mental and emotional outlets of a constructive nature. He is not interested in enough good to overcome the pressure of misfortune when it arises. Here we have the same problem that confronts the man retiring from business. If at the age of retirement he has not built sufficient interest, his health will most naturally decline. If, however, his retirement is a new door opening into a well-planned future, he is very likely to break the insurance statistics and collect his funds much longer than he would otherwise. Many persons have considered this an end in itself and have felt that the longer they lived, the more completely they revenged themselves against insurance probabilities. It's a rather negative approach, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> Each sign has uh, certain tensions or tendencies which may have an effect upon life. Now, we cannot go into all of the machinery of astrology at this time. We have to hope that you will have at least a broad concept of what we are talking about uh, without going into every harrowing detail. But we do know, for example, that the signs of the zodiac are divided into two groups, which are called positive and negative. Uh, the positive signs being those of odd number, the first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh signs. The uh, negative or receptive signs are the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Therefore, in working with people, we have observed that the positive signs constitute the easiest polarities for the male human being. And the negative signs, so-called, or passive signs, 
the best polarities for the feminine being. This means that actually positive and negative as con uh, conceived in China were not to be termed uh, merely good and bad, but positive being uh, the sign of aggression or the outmoving of qualities and values, and the passive signs having more to do with the internal, intuitive, inspirational, emotional, psychical phases of experience. Therefore, a man who is born under a positive sign naturally receives a certain cooperation of energy. The sign is most appropriate to his obvious existence. A man, however, born under a negative or feminine sign has already here a certain type of conflict. Now this conflict may not be in any sense bad. Nature does not create bad. Nature, however, does demand more where it presents opportunities demanding greater adjustment. As in the case of the man, so with the woman. A woman born under a masculine sign or a positive sign has greater difficulty balancing her own femininity. And unfortunately, when either the masculine or the feminine polarities are off balance, this unbalance is not an attainment or achievement. It is a liability. It is a difficulty that has to be faced. In order to understand this situation, then, we have to realize that the man who is hypersensitive, being born under a feminine sign, intuitional, more or less internal in his thinking, more or less positive in his emotional reflexes, subject therefore to a certain negativity of outward personality has greater difficulty getting along, either with men or with women. The woman on the opposite polarity, born under a masculine sign, presents more drive than is natural or normal to her kind, is less adaptable and adjustable, less able to complement someone else in marriage, less able to quickly and immediately assume the maternal role in motherhood, uh, less willing to permit her children to grow up, but continuing a positive dominant attitude over them. This type of woman may succeed better in business, but may pay for this achievement in terms of psychic peace of mind. Thus, wherever we have these cross polarities, we also have the beginning of a kind of tension. We have not anything wrong because actually the consciousness of man is androgene. The psychic life is both male and female. But when this psychic life moves through a body of the opposing polarities, the body and its pressures, its temperament and its tensions, uh, make it more difficult for that person to function harmoniously. Uh, the object intended is, of course, obvious. Nature is not so much interested in the happiness of means as it is in the dignity of ends. And therefore, nature is working for a very definite purpose, namely to gradually diminish these opposites, to cause the individuals involved to become more aware of the psychic polarities of each other, for it is only through these inner experiences that this mysterious interval between the sexes can ultimately be psychologically bridged. As long as the two polarities remain totally distinct, uh, they may harmonize a little better in physical activity, but their mutual understanding is not enriched. Nature is working for this enrichment, and therefore is constantly placing individuals in positions and conditions in which they become more and more aware of the function of opposite polarities, this awareness arising within their own consciousness as the result of this situation that I have mentioned. So here we have one of our problems in psychology. The hypersensitive man and 
the materially, intellectually aggressive woman. Now, both of these uh, situations have tremendous values. Actually, your highly sensitive man has given us our world of arts in a very large degree. It was the sensitiveness of Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci or the great Raphael that was represented in the tremendous artistic achievement which these men uh, contributed to society. It is the mysterious, sensitive, almost maternal dedication to the needs of other persons that has transformed Albert Schweitzer into a world hero. If he had been a true, rugged, masculine intellectual, he would not have done what he did. On the uh, other side of the uh, ledger, we realize the tremendous contribution coming into society through the scientifically uh, trained woman, the philosophically trained woman, who is able to bring her emotional life into a more dominant place in world affairs, where the uh, uh, tremendous contribution of the psychic and intuitive polarities can become useful in the management of world uh, pressures and tensions. The uh, balance to be obtained is well worth the price. But in the transition, both types pass through growing pains, which are very uncomfortable, represented by confusion in character balance. Uh, this confusion uh, can also be largely helped if the individual understands himself better, understands the reasons for the experiences through which he is passing. Now, in a brief way, in the length of time that we have, we want to suggest certain general points to persons born under the different signs of the zodiac. Uh, we must remember, however, that we are not working from properly calculated nativities. Therefore, it is quite possible for any single individual to be an exception uh, to the patterns we point out. We do not expect these patterns to fill completely. We do not expect every individual to recognize himself in these patterns. But at the same time, uh, from a more or less empiric point of view, these patterns are still usually operating to some degree, although this operation may be modified in any particular instance. The pressures themselves are classical. Uh, they are almost certain to appear in some way. And it often becomes helpful if the person, knowing himself better than anyone else can ever know him, uh, takes over certain keynotes and tries to explore his own personality to discover how these principles are operating in him. Instead of simply saying they are or they are not, it is better to estimate to the degree to which they may be present in an effort to learn something that is useful to our own needs. We all have pressures or we would not be seeking knowledge. We are all to a measure insecure or we would not be questing in religion and philosophy for sources of personal integration. So there has to be some reason why we are in this world. And we are in this world largely because we are not quite good enough to leave it. And here we will remain until we improve the situation. The first of our zodiacal signs, of course, is Aries, extending approximately from the 20th of March to the 20th of April. Now we know that sometimes it's the 21st and sometimes it's the 22nd, but for round figures, uh, let us make some kind of a general uh, statement. And where you are born between the 18th and the 22nd or 3rd of a month, consider both the preceding and following suggestions, because they may be present to some degree as a compound. And persons under compound pressures of this nature also exhibit a new kind of mixed tensions, uh, which are often quite interesting uh, to the observer, and not quite so interesting to the proud owner thereof. <laughs> Aries, I will in each instance indicate whether the sign be a masculine or feminine sign 
as this may help in the person estimating from what we previously said concerning the mixed psychic pressures. Aries is a masculine sign, and generally speaking is a sign which bestows a considerable amount of basic energy. There is probably no sign in which energy needs less definition. It is itself. It is a tremendous energy power. And one of the things that this energy likes to do in the Aries person is work. Uh, it's too bad we haven't more on the other side because there's a lot of the world's work that isn't getting done. But the Aries person is active. And uh, where this activity is frustrated or thwarted, where they are unable to be constructively busy, we begin to find a little psychic pressure mounting within them. Also, this sign is a lover of the open spaces for the most part. They like large areas of activity. Some Aries people will become very neurotic if nailed to a desk every day. They are most suitable for outdoor activities or activities carrying a maximum of variety and change. Uh, they like activity usually that is a combination of mental-physical activity. They do not like to do just mental work. They want to get their hands at something. Uh, they want to construct or to build. Nature has often endowed them with a pretty rugged constitution. And they, uh, they, like to, they like to be up and at it. And activity can sometimes get out of hand with these people. In their effort to be continually active, they may overstrain their resources, particularly as they grow older, for they find it difficult to adjust with limitations of strength or health. Normally speaking, without too much tension arising from conflict, uh, these people uh, hold their health and hold their energies rather better than a number of the other sides. Uh, they are often stronger and, and more enduring in older years than members of the other, than some of the other uh, astrological groups. Now, Aries also has an interesting and wonderful ability uh, to retire into a kind of inner quietude. Uh, in the advanced Aries, this means that the individual simply is able to build a rich inner life. With the less advanced type, the Aries under tension is very apt to go to sleep. Uh, this, uh, tension, uh, this uh, tension does not, therefore, do the damage uh, that it might in a good many of the other signs. Very often these people can come, almost sleep standing up. I know one Aries who is uh, exceedingly adroit at this problem. They are able to sleep beautifully and peacefully while other people are talking to them. Now this is uh, uh, more or less of an achievement, and it is magnified in the one case I mentioned by the extraordinary fact that this person can sleep with a look of tremendous intelligence on their faces and with their eyes open. Now, unless they are suddenly addressed directly, no one even notices that they are asleep. This is very, a very helpful receptivity. Uh, many Aries persons have, by their peculiar strength, drawn to themselves heavy problems. They have drawn, drawn long-range loads to be carried. Some of these loads are pretty difficult. But the Aries person has a jaunty way of carrying them that is almost unbelievable. It is because in an emergency the Aries person can simply relax almost without trying. All this helps in many ways, uh, but because of their natural activity in life, the sign is subject to accidents. It is subject to long, enduring difficulties arising from accident or injury. Uh, this may mean that it must carry with it through the years some at least minor physical problem that is not going to clear up entirely. Even so, this is carried with a, an amazing degree of fortitude. Uh, the people are patient but active. Uh, they are perfectly willing to permit energy to be used now 
at the same time they can and do project long-range plans. Uh, the Aries person is at a great disadvantage if they develop insomnia. Therefore, it is quite important for them to watch their sleep and to watch their ability to relax when they are not engaged in activity. These people need considerable sleep, and where they are denied it for too long a period of time, it will produce difficulty. Because of the natural allotment of energy in them, these people also become tremendously disturbed if this energy suddenly seems to diminish. The uh, Aries person is almost unable uh, to bear the experience of being tired. It seems to strike against them psychologically. They become a little panicky if they suddenly find they cannot do the things which they are accustomed to do. This is about their weakest point, and they have to work with it uh, as much as possible. Their largest and uh, happiest situation is where they can be pleasantly, constructively engaged in a variety of attitudes or works re requiring considerable physical activity. The uh, main psychological fear is that they have not really ever adjusted to sickness. And sickness, therefore, presents a little psychological emergency. They have not adjusted too well to age. Therefore, limitation of activity uh, must be met with a kind of quiet, contemplative courage. Uh, many Aries have sharp tempers and are quick-tempered, uh, but not generally given to grudges. But as they mature, the Aries person's temper becomes remarkably even, and as a result of that, their health remains uh, surprisingly good over a long period of time. They are in many instances an excellent example of how an energetic person uh, can at the same time conserve resources. There is not much tendency to waste energy. There is very little tendency to argument or discussion about things. But a simple direct doing of that which is next. And in this simple direct doing, a wonderful conservation of resource. These persons should, however, uh, not worry too much, uh, not create negative imagination about health or circumstance, try to be as contemporary as possible, and uh, enjoy simple things every day. This is the way in which their health, their energies, can be best uh, sustained. They are not too involved. The Aries woman is somewhat more involved than the man, because her uh, energies are more like his. They are more active. They do things more. And in so uh, externalizing their energies, uh, they often get themselves into a position in which they can be accused of driving or dictating or attempting to dominate. Uh, thus, again, with them, achievement must be smoothed out, or else resistance will cause psychic stress. When people resist them, uh, they fight harder. Uh, the real secret of the problem is when someone resists, relax, and uh, in due course of time, try again. But if you fight through too hard, uh, you will waste energy, and no man today has energy to waste. From the 20th of April to the 20th of May, we have the Taurian person. And while they are generally represented as being bullheaded, this is not their real problem. Taurus is a feminine sign and presents greater difficulties to men than to women. By its very nature, uh, Taurus is imaginative. It is also, down inside of itself, rather easily frustrated. It is defeated uh, more quickly than some other signs. There are a lot of fears lurking in the background of the Taurian personality, 
and they often come through in the form of an extraordinary appearance of aggressiveness, which is not actually their real nature at all. There is an under, under stratum of melancholy. There is a tendency to fall into negative feelings. There is a tremendous psychic restlessness, great difficulty in settling down to something. Uh, the, uh, the person uh, does not become a routine person too well, and uh, they have a great many fears locked in their personalities. One of the common fears of Taurus has always been the fear of age. The Taurian person is a youth worshiper. Uh, they uh, are very much impressed by appearance. Uh, in a Taurian, a gray hair is a disaster and immediately you have to uh, treat it accordingly. I've watched the uh, gray-haired men with their first gray hairs appearing, Torian men, sitting patiently pulling them out. <laughs> this, however, ultimately becomes a losing game. The, less, the, the least you can say is that you will lose all the hair. But these people are afraid of age. Not so much because uh, of its infirmities, but because of this tremendous, almost veneration for youthfulness and a complex about the mirror. There is, uh, there is uh, you know, the symbol of Venus, which rules Taurus, is a mirror. And the Taurian, looking in the mirror, gains from what he sees a considerable part of his daily psychology. Uh, this appearance must be optimistic and satisfactory, or the day does not go so well. The Taurian, therefore, needs to have a true philosophy of beauty, which the sign itself implies. It needs to recognize the beauty and dignity of youth, and also the beauty and dignity of maturity. It has to realize that beauty is not only youthfulness, but graciousness of consciousness, and that a beautifully lived life will result in a subtle, atmosphere of beauty accompanying the individual long after physical charms may have a tendency uh, to deteriorate. Consequently, uh, this problem of youth, life, beauty, freedom, uh, the development of imaginations beyond their normal uh, instincts, an overemphasis upon romantic and dramatic situations, these become the sources of psychic tension in these people. Where this psychic tension becomes too pressureful, we get uh, too much of a personality factor. We get the personality pushed forward uh, far beyond its natural uh, right and purpose. The individual becomes too dependent upon personality and not upon the principle behind this. Now when this strikes the man, we can have the vain man. We can have the egocentric individual, the man who becomes too much locked in the importance of his own personality. And uh, under some conditions, this may lead to a very aggressive dictatorial attitude or to a tremendous sense of defeatism or a neurotic tendency developing within the person. The problems are largely emotional. But uh, the answer to them always is the recognition that beauty is a therapeutic agent if we use it correctly. But it must be used correctly or it will not achieve its proper ends. Now, the Gemini individual from the 20th of May to the 20th of June presents an entirely different type of psychological integration problem. Here we have a tremendous need for very simple self-discipline, especially mental self-discipline. The individual must be taught the importance of straightening out his own thinking. This sign is a sort of psychic sponge. It takes into itself many ideas which are not meaningful. It permits completely conflicting attitudes to live together without attempting to discriminate between them. It causes the person to be too easily influenced by fads and notions and attitudes of those around them. It represents also a degree of hypercriticism, 
and the Gemini person loses the advantage of simple faith simply because they become too mentally involved. There is also a little tendency on the part of the Gemini individual to shy away from physical responsibilities. These people do not accept promotion in business as easily as some others, uh, nor do they uh, carry on with the same breadth of interests that are important to a healthy, happy adjustment. The tendency to be a little too scattered within an area. The individual may be scattered within a certain intellectual viewpoint. These people will run into political thinking of a minority kind. Uh, they will develop peculiar and extraordinary sympathies for the underprivileged. They will be leaders in socialization projects. Uh, they will be discomforted and par paralyzed by news broadcasts. Uh, they will take on all kinds of negative fears. And the mind, instead of solving problems, will exaggerate them. Uh, I think probably one of the troubles here is just simply lack of a sufficiently colorful existence. Uh, these persons have not experienced widely enough uh, to be able to evaluate experience properly. They've lived within certain areas, social, uh, economic, political, cultural. They have never really peered over the fence to find out what is happening on the other side. Thus, there are many things around them all the time that bewilder them. Uh, I would say that for this type of person, an increase of breadth of interest, the development of various hobbies and avocational outlets, uh, a distinct effort not to be critical, uh, not to be bitter about anything, even that which is wrong. Because while we may know a thing is not good, the moment we become embittered about even evil, we begin to prepare our way for our own psychic undoing. What is not right, we know is not right. But if we personalize it, dramatize it, and emotionalize it, we will be sick. And this problem often results in the Gemini individual falling into a complex of nervous situations. It's very good for the uh, Gemini person to learn to sit down quietly and enjoy the good book, enjoy a pleasant conversation, and to enjoy sometimes small things of no great importance. Uh, and not to become critical and feel that if they're not at this moment engaged in a cosmic enterprise, they're doing nothing. Uh, these people become very impatient with other folks and their small purposes. This is a very serious mistake because there will always be other folks and there will always be small purposes. And from perspective, maybe ours will be among the small purposes, although we do not believe it at the moment. From the 20th of June to the 20th of July, we have the cancer person. Oh, the cancer person reminds me of the American soldier in China who was looking at one of the dragons carved on the walls near the summer palace of the Empress Dowager a number of years ago. He took a look at this dragon and he said, My, these Chinese have the awfulest imaginations. <laughs> now, the cancer individual can sometimes have the awfulest imagination. The sign is highly imaginative and highly sensitive and out of it can come a tremendous amount of creative artistry. The sign is feminine, and in the feminine nature may often result in a very strong uh, maternal instinct, uh, a, a natural psychism, which can lead to a series of inner emotional experiences which may be over-accepted. The tendency of the, uh, the cancer person is to be extremely sympathetic of problem. At the same time, their own inner integration is not always up to their hopes and their beliefs and their convictions. The cancer person will very often try to do for someone else what they have never been able to do for themselves, and that is bring life into harmonious relationships. 
The cancer person, therefore, has to be constantly aware of the, delay, of the danger of internal emotional delusion. The things which they hold to be tremendously important may not be quite as valid as they think they are. That the tremendous tensions and pressures which they exert may not be justified. And that a, a great deal more could be accomplished easily and quietly and peacefully by simply relaxing and doing the things that can immediately be done. Uh, the cancer person is often very social conscious. Uh, that is, not necessarily merely in small things, but in terms of social need. Uh, they would like to see a better world. They would like to see happier people. And very often uh, they overdo in the effort to bring these things about. The overdoing is not necessarily wrong, but it is wrong where the individual has not yet established his own footings adequately. Uh, the, the cancer person has not adequate establishment in themselves. Uh, they, are be they have become a little too dependent upon their own activity uh, for their own integration. The integration should cause the activity. They feel they will be happy if they forget themselves in their job. But they cannot forget themselves entirely in the job because the job is of themselves. And the situation becomes sometimes rather complicated. As a result of tremendous emotional intensity, uh, very often, almost always, frustrated to some degree by its own intensity, these people are often disillusioned or embittered or settle down to a long period of acceptance of what to them may appear to be a dismal state of affairs. If they could uh, realize that much that they believe to be very certain only originates in their own moods, they will be happier and able to face the situations more effectively. It is a sign in which the person is too easily pressed by unknown intensities of emotion within himself. And these pressures nearly always cause him to overlook the need to integrate his own nature. Where this happens, you have the danger of uh, particularly digestive problems. You have difficulty in elimination, quite frequently appearing. You have a uh, tremendous tendency to fall into fads, to fall into various intensities the individual feeling that an intensity means a value, and this is not always the case. In the cancer man, we find again the artistic, sensitive, psychic, emotional factors making it difficult for him to adjust in society. He always apparently uh, has to have some employment or some activity which gives opportunity for creative emotional expression. Uh, this emotional intensity uh, detracts to a measure from his solid industrial adjustment. From the 20th of July to the 20th of August, we have Leo. Now, Leo are people usually who obviously or quietly set about something and generally stay with it until they feel that it is accomplished. It is a go do it and stay with it type of situation. Now, the sign is essentially masculine. And Leo people divide into two distinct parts or types, one of which is quite the Rora, the individual with the strong Leonine executive pressure, and the other we might term an intimidated Leo. The intimidated Leo is actually one who has the Leo qualities but with a very highly sublimated consciousness. Uh, this consciousness causes the person uh, to turn his willpower largely to the control and directing of his own life. Uh, under such conditions, you have the mystic, the educator, the idealist. Uh, where the Leo person is more aggressive, you have the leader and even the dictator. You have the strongly arrogant type of Leo. Now, the uh, great virtue of the Leo person is their sincere and dedicated uh, sense of responsibility. They are faithful unto death of the things that they believe, and they are very excellent servants of good causes. The uh, danger to them, of course, in their activity 
is an extremism. Uh, they are not quite flexible enough. They are not quite able to find the humorous side of life. Things get a little too serious. Problems are exaggerated to some degree. And in the quiet side of Leo, dedication has even led to martyrdom. It is a sign in which the person uh, to be really uh, as happy as they can be and as well adjusted as possible must develop just a little more sense of humor, must, re must recognize that they are working with a world that is not going to do quite the way they think it should, and uh, take a rather parental attitude of leadership without domination, of helpfulness without criticism, and of cooperation without a determination to run something. All these things have to be very quietly worked out in the Leo. The moment a Leo person tries to dominate situations, he creates tremendous resistance. His very nature seems to do this, and as a result he has pain and troubles that otherwise he should not be forced to endure. The Leo woman is a very dedicated person, and uh, Leo women in families are often uh, the dedicated uh, co-worker in a project. Uh, the Leo person, Leo woman, inheriting uh, a husband or family responsibility will carry it with great conscientiousness. Also, they will remember uh, persons whom they have admired. They are hero worshippers, and they are particularly dedicated to the perpetuation of the work of the dead particularly some close person, or leader, or object of respect in their lives. They will continue a continuing allegiance to that over a period of years. Many organizations pass into the control of Leo women who become devout and wonderful preservers of the trust that has been given to them. This is the way in which they work out uh, their feminine approach. They become world motherly rather than simply personal parents. The Leo person, uh, because of their pressures, uh, has some enemies, has some opponents, is open to criticism, and where this gathers too much momentum may result in sickness. They are subject to falls, dizzy spells, and injuries of a minor nature involving the heart. They are sometimes subject in, in older years to difficulty in locomotion, but uh, for the most part they get along fairly well if they are able to sort of graciously warm up their programs so that they do not appear to be merely forcing situations. From the 20th of August to the 20th of September is the Virgo person, which is a feminine sign. And the Virgo individual, generally speaking, is also rather the nervous type, uh, uh, more or less introverted by nature, very often successful in forms of humanitarian enterprise, especially involving health as doctors, nurses, therapists, and persons of that nature. They have a great love of helping the sick. Very often Virgo persons, by their nature, being somewhat negative, have a tendency to draw things to them, and they draw problems. They have a magnetic fascination about them, uh, which causes persons weaker or more helpless to move in. This situation often throws the Virgo person into a long-range responsibility program a program of taking care of, helping, guiding, leading, directing, sustaining, supporting, and holding up somebody. This can become more or less tiresome. And uh, as a result of it, uh, the uh, Virgo individual uh, becomes a little negative, a little disillusioned, uh, a bit pathetic sometimes, and uh, gets a sort of internal feeling that they are being well imposed upon. I have news for them. They are. <laughs> but at the same time, I've known cases where things were done to put it right, and the Virgo person was utterly miserable because uh, he just couldn't get along except when he was imposed upon. Those were his best moments. Well, if he can handle it without getting sick or getting uh, irritable, nervous, or troubled, all right. 
but the tendency is for them to absorb into themselves these problems and then spread the problems in the area of their own activity. Uh, the Virgo physician has to be careful that he doesn't discover in many of his patients some particular ailment with which he is peculiarly interested. He has a tendency to sort of pass on these things in this way. Virgo persons, being by nature nervous, being by nature perhaps a little unable to control uh, their tendency to sort of chatter along their way of life, should cultivate again uh, as much philosophy as possible, deep values with which to balance uh, mental pressures, and, and a very broad, tolerant, kindly, relaxed relationship with life. Otherwise, you're going to find too many nervous ailments appearing, uh, too much tendency to fatigue, and uh, a little negative melancholy slowly creeping in to color the life uh, rather uh, drably. They mustn't reach the situation in which they must be busy every minute or miserable. There must be a way of not uh, being quite so busy and at the same time being happy, uh, pleasant, and integrated, and adjusted. By this uh, procedure, all things go a little better. The Virgo man, because of the uh, negative endowment which he has received, is apt to be lacking in a necessary degree of aggressiveness for family leadership or for advancement in business, and he is apt to be engaged in some line of activity uh, which does not demand too much creative imagination. Therefore, he needs creative imagination rather than routine to enrich and perfect his life. From the 20th of September to the 20th of October, we have the Libra person. And the Libra individual is one in whom frustrations very often have almost immediate results. Uh, the frustration being pressure. The Libra person being a very willful person. Uh, being a person with tremendous determinations. And to a certain degree, uh, an instinctive tendency to try to aggressively influence other people must learn that all of this procedure will shorten life and shorten happiness and will result in serious uh, detriment to the various metabolic processes of the body. The person who is too dominant, too uh, aggressive, has metabolism troubles. And these in turn can lead to many other situations. So that the Libra person must let down the drive by means of which they are pressed to either supreme achievement or nothing. Uh, this perfectionism of the Libra person, uh, this absolute requirement that they be in some way important, may cause this importance uh, to be attempted by force rather than by merit. The only way in which the Libra person can achieve the high degree of recognition which they really desire is by having the kind of nature, the kind of personality, and the kind of attainments by which this approbation would naturally come to them. If it is not obvious and they try to force it, they lose friends, they create for themselves isolation and bring a great deal of unnecessary criticism upon their own heads. Therefore, the problem of Libra is this problem of building firm merits under a very deep, broad understanding of life. And as this understanding increases, the tendency to dogmatize decreases. It is too much pressure, too much willfulness that brings psychological sickness to these people, and it's the relaxation of willfulness that must, in a turn, bring them back again to peace and security. Uh, the Libra woman has the tendency often to resent her own femininity and to wish she was a man or able to carry men's work. Uh, this situation isn't essentially good because it becomes the basis of a neurotic tendency. Uh, instead of this attitude, it's far better for her to engage in some uh, rather definite pursuit and to build a career in which she has a reasonable degree of extroversion. 
Uh, it's not good to build anything upon resentment, only upon accomplishment, everywhere along the way through life. From the 20th of October to the 20th of November, we have the feminine sign of Scorpio. This sign, again, is one of our intensity pattern signs. It comes with a great deal of uncontrolled drive. I think the Scorpio person of all the uh, signs is the one most likely ultimately to become afraid of themselves. They do not understand the pressures that are in them. Probably most of them will rationalize the pressure in somewhat this way, namely that along the way of life there was something they always wanted to be. Situations made it almost impossible for them to be this thing. Therefore there is a defeatism in there. There is a sense uh, that this life has closed its doors on them and that they have been forced into situations that are not fruitful of true fulfillment. These people uh, must always have some creative emotional outlet because if their emotions go sour, they are in a very bad way. To keep their emotions from going sour, they must not be critical of other people. Uh, they must be as gentle and optimistic as possible and uh, make a disciplined program of surrounding their lives with interests by which they become closer to other people. The tendency of the Scorpio may be to evade social contact or avoid it as uninteresting or unprofitable or too difficult. But social contact is one way to keep the Scorpio person reasonably normal. They are in great need to be able to mingle easily with other people and to recover from a dramatic tendency toward self-consciousness. This self-consciousness is not good. It leads to physical problem uh, and very often these individuals suffer from unusual tensions uh, involving the spine and involving the sensory perceptions and they frequently have trouble with their eyes. So this sign uh, in order to, to gain its adjustment in life must uh, get away from a certain self-centered focusing by means of which they become shy or un, so unadjusted socially. Uh, they must be able to relax and find for this drive that they have within themselves, which is almost a blind drive, they must have for it a variety of useful, happy, well-adjusted outlets. And the best outlets for them must be in creative fields, in creative arts, self-expression, or production of self-created artistry or craft work. Their best work is in creativity, which is generally denied to them in their ordinary vocational activity. Creativity for them is the most important phase of their lives. This sign, incidentally, carries almost the same recommendation for the ladies. It is, again, creativity uh, escaping from pattern or drudgery or order or rhythms which become boresome. Every uh, Scorpio woman must have some psychological outlet that is interesting. And if they haven't found what is interesting, they must realize that it is because they have not been interested. And to be interesting, things must awaken interest in us. But there are many things, particularly of a more serious and important nature, which Scorpio people can find to be extremely interesting. From the 20th of November to the 20th of December, we have the Sagittarian. And the Sagittarian is often one with too many interests. Uh, a, a very uh, interesting, rather pleasant personality is very marked in, these, in this sign. Uh, but it is also one which is distinguished both in men and women uh, for lack of, we might say, self-control. Uh, this sign has to look out for the misuse of escape mechanisms. The individuals born under it must not run away from facts. The tendency is to obscure facts, 
to hide them in one way or another and to develop surface projects which are not consistent with inner convictions. This leads also to one of the great dangers of the sign, namely intemperance. And in many cases, uh, the alcoholic problem has ruined the life of a Sagittarian. But if this forms one kind of habit, we know there are many other habits quite socially acceptable that can also have a detrimental effect. And uh, one of the problems with the Sagittarian is the danger of developing a success fixation. The importance of succeeding, the status symbolism, these things uh, very often uh, must be considered. Also, the temperament of the Sagittarian, particularly the Sagittarian woman, often gravitates against a successful marriage. And as a result of being a little too critical, a little too demanding, and perhaps a little too extravagant, the Sagittarian woman has got to guard her home, or something may go wrong in it. The tendency also, finally, with the Sagittarian person, is to live through an adventurousness into a final state of more or less quiet security. In the uh, uh, long range of things, the Sagittarian often comes to a very happy and fortunate situation. But they have to come to that after they have exhausted a series of false situations with false glamour. The earlier, therefore, that the Sagittarian can discriminate real value from appearance and can turn from appearance to value, the sooner they can do this, the more quickly they will avoid uh, the pressures and tendencies which affect the sign. The sign is affected by surgery. Usually there is at least one major surgery or danger of it. Uh, the sign is affected uh, to a measure at least uh, by uh, fears, negative fears, and by defeatism, and often by a pattern of life in which the individual has sacrificed too much in the vain effort to try and succeed. Uh, the merit system must be strong, the person must be relaxed, and uh, the effort to succeed must never reach a point of compromise. If we compromise with principles, the Sagittarian does not do well. Religion frequently becomes a strong factor in bringing the Sagittarian person to final integration. Now the next sign is Capricorn from the 20th of December to the 20th of January. This sign has as its principal adversary in terms of psychology and health a certain setness or fixedness of attitude. It is present in both the men and the women of the sign. This sign there is not a great deal of inconsistency between the two except that, strangely enough, the women seem to appear the more ambitious of the two uh, in this particular group. The uh, Capricornian person has to be careful not to become set in ways, for anything that becomes set becomes crystallized. The Capricornian cannot afford to settle down into any attitude or condition or even into a place which will have a tendency to close in upon them. Everything closes in on them if they are not careful. This closing in restricts perspective, restricts opportunities and privileges, and gradually causes the individual to develop physical tendencies uh, of uh, crystallization, rheumatic problems, and uh, chronic difficulties arising from chronic attitudes. Now, from the 20th of January to the 20th of February, we have the Aquarian folks. And here again, we have a nerve tension problem. Uh, we find that in this particular sign, although it is masculine, that the ladies have a better adjustment frequently than the men. The Aquarian uh, woman is uh, inclined to be vivacious, attractive, personable. She also has a bright and sparkling type of nature which is not always the result of having had an easy life because many of these people carry quite a good deal of tragedy in their inner consciousness. But they rise above it rather dramatically and for the most part spend their lives in a sincere effort to try to work out constructive ways of using their energies. Uh, they're quite uh, the organizers, they're quite the, 
uh, inspirers of the people around them. The Aquarian man is also, uh, along somewhat more scientific lines, inventive and creative. In almost any field of activity, however, he is apt to be a little critical because his mind works quickly and he is apt to outthink the boss, which can be a serious mistake in business. He can also uh, have a certain kind of honesty, which is easily hurt and afflicted. He does not like to compromise his principles for any reason. This can also be a financial hazard at the present time. Actually, the Aquarian is best uh, suited to some form of individual business or in a field activity in which he has very little contact uh, with the politics of the organization in which he is involved. He has a natural dislike for politics, a critical attitude towards the machinery of management, and prefers to be on his own. This is for one of two reasons, either because of principle or because he is not able to control himself. Now, if it is due to the later, uh, to the latter of these two, if it is simply unwillingness to be disciplined, he should put himself in a position where discipline is inevitable. But if it is simply because of real conviction that, that discipline in this case represents compromise of principle, then, of course, it is his right and his proper duty uh, to remain true to principles. Uh, it's a, an analysis of himself to determine whether he is using his principles or merely making evaders out of them. And the last sign is our old friend the fishes, Pisces, from the 20th of February to the 20th of March, a feminine sign. Now in this case, the feminine sign has not been too kind to the women that are born under it, because it has given them also a very powerful imagination with a tendency to be somewhat morbid or self-pitying. Uh, the internal life of the Piscean woman is too likely to be lived in the past to perpetuate grievances, grudges, and misfortunes, and to be unable to completely extricate from self-centeredness. The Piscean woman needs to get her mind on other people so completely that she can't even remember that she's ever had troubles. She doesn't have to remember them because she knows she's had them anyway, that she's never going to totally forget but it is better never to bring them into an immediate situation. Don't make the mistake of when someone tells you their trouble of reminding them of yours. This is not going to help, but it is a tendency. There is a tendency also for uh, things that happened in childhood and long ago to sort of come out and overshadow. The tendency of the past or that which is gone to rule the living. This tendency should be coped with and every effort made to give it greater vitality. The Piscean woman probably needs more education, more activity, more professional work life than the majority of the other signs. She needs a, a definite area of public service if she can possibly attain to it. The Piscean man is very often the clergyman or the psychologist or the doctor or something of that nature. He is inclined to be uh, as it is a feminine sign, he is inclined to be passive, introverted, imaginative, and creative within his own fields. With him, however, the energy problem becomes more or less continuously acute through life. His energies do not sustain him. And one of the, his ailments, uh, as a result of his uh, lack of energy and not too robust health, will often involve circulation, nervousness, uh, fatigue, and uh, diminution of the sensory perceptions and faculties. Against these, which are more or less uh, indications of low voltage within his an electric field, he must use what means he can to increase his energies, but mostly to decrease his waste in their use. He gets by by saving carefully what he has and wasting none of it on pursuits which may be perfectly practical for other people, but are a luxury which he cannot afford. 
Now, our time is more than enough. We've tried to carry you around the circle with a few remarks, and we hope that you will find something that will be helpful, and if you don't, that you won't blame me for misjudging you completely. We'll do the best we can, anyway. <laughs> Thank you.